Is it going to be cloudy tonight? That's the question all of us Milky Way photographers ask every day. But who do we ask? Is there an oracle that tells us whether it's going to be cloudy? Well, I'm Aaron King from Photog Adventures, and today on Astro Photog, I'm going to tell you about two of my favorite oracles for telling you whether it's going to be cloudy. Hey guys, seriously, I have two oracles that I trust when I wanna find out, is tonight gonna be a clear sky? Is it worth driving one, two, three, four hours to a location? Well, my two favorite sites are cleardarksky.com and clearoutside.com. So let's talk about both of them and how you need to use them as a Milky Way photographer. <laughs> So here we are at cleardarksky.com first. This is my personal favorite, but it only works for those of us living in the United States, parts of Mexico, and Canada. And so if you live outside of these areas, this is not going to be terribly useful for you, but you can use it when you come visit me in Utah and come do Milky Way photography. So what you want to click on here is clear sky charts. Go down to your area, Canada, Mexico, or even Bahamas, it looks like, and go to your state in Utah. And then I would, you can look at it this way and quickly see from these colors, okay, where's a good area? So if you need to look for an area that has good clear skies and you just want to quickly browse and you're like, you know what? I'll go anywhere in the state to make this happen. You can look at it from this perspective, but usually you have a location in mind and you want to go there. So I click on the map and here on the map, let's say I want to go down to Capitol Reef and in Capitol Reef, looks like I have two options to use. I can use this map cover the, or this pin right here that shows information from a weather station there or this pin. Usually you have just one option and it's covering a lot of area around it. But don't worry, you can really check against multiples if you want to be particular. Otherwise, just check the location you want to go and be cool with it. Middle of Frauta. Fruta? Why not? Because uh, this is Capitol Reef National Monument. It's actual weather station there. That's the one I would check. So what am I getting from this information? What do you actually need to know? Well, it's showing you cloud cover, transparency, seeing, darkness, wind, humidity, temperature. Well, for this purposes today, let's only focus on the two things that are vital for you in Milky Way photography. And the first thing is cloud cover. And these colors right here, darkest blue is good. That's all you need to know. If it's going to have a bunch of white sections, then you know, okay, there's clouds. And you can, and so you look at this and go, well, I'm going to go tonight to Capitol Reef. Should I do it? Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. It's completely dark blue all the way to midnight and it starts getting cloudy. So about one or midnight or one or 2 a.m., it starts coming into some clouds. And so I could still do something then. But when it starts getting to that point where you have a couple hours between the clouds, start to think that, you know, this could be two hours late on its predictions and I could get there and have something block me. So just know that that could happen, but don't hold back from going. Almost every time when you see a sky like this and you go, you're glad you did. When you see entirely white, then it's definitely don't bother. Don't bother going. So what's the second factor in this that you need to focus on? It's darkness. And right here, you can see the darkness as it goes from a light color of actual white to yellow, orange to blue. All these twilight periods are displayed here. So the twilight periods are lighter blue colors. And then it would go to black if there was a new moon. But the reason why these few squares actually have some blue color and then gradient into dark black, dark blue, it's because the moon is still up. And so this is telling you, well, yeah, you know, 10 o'clock, or sorry, eight o'clock, this is pretty, pretty good at 20 hour, but you got the moon up. And so that's what you got to fight with. So you look at that information. Is it dark blue up top here on cloud cover? And is the darkness cooperating too? And so let's check another location to repeat this. Let me go up here. You can see within 60 miles. Let me check only the items or only the pins that are within 60 miles of this spot. That way I don't check something that's so far away that wouldn't really matter. So Boulder, let's do Boulder. What's Boulder looking like? I like to choose something southwest of my pin that I'm thinking of, just because as the clouds are moving in, typically in Utah, they're coming from the Southwest and they're coming towards us. And so if that down there looks good and here shows some clouds, it's probably gonna move over and open up for me. And that's just a best guess beginning to start with. So let's look at Boulder. Man, it is beautiful tonight. I mean, it is gonna be a great night for it, completely clear. And then when you look at some of these light blue colors, don't go, hmm, well, 
that sucks. I'm not going to go because look, it's only 30% cover. When I hover over with my mouse, it tells me what that, that actual color means. This one that's lighter is 70% covered. That's when it starts to be iffy. But when a cloudy sky is 70% covered, your, your shot of the Milky Way core could be totally open. It might be fine, so don't hold back either in that as long as you get some really good clear open skies around it because the time lapse of the Milky Way and clouds moving overhead is actually pretty awesome. So then it looks you look at this and say, well, when the time the moon sets are right around here and I have best skies possible, I start to see some clouds, but it's 30% covered. That's worth the risk. I'm going out tonight. And that's how you use cleardarksky.com. And clearoutside.com is completely similar. Let me just show you an area in Utah. This is going to show you the percentage of sky obscured by clouds. And it's going to give it to you from the time that it is right now. So right now it is 2.17 p.m. here in Utah when I'm recording this. And it's 1 o'clock is the first hour that it shows. This is showing, all of these are showing them in the 24-hour clock period. So you can see from 1 o'clock all the way up until midnight at 00, zero hour. And then the next day going through that. Clear dark sky is nice because it gives you all of Wednesday, Thursday, and part of the next day. So if you want to go out on Saturday night, checking on Wednesday midday, it's not going to work. You're going to want to wait till Thursday, late Thursday, to see what Saturday is doing. And if you're going to use clearoutside.com, you're only going to see a 24-hour period. And so you're going to either go in the day of and check, which is the best time to check. Okay, for sure should I go? But build your plans up at least 24 hours in advance on both of these sites. So what's new? What's unique about clearoutside.com? Well, I used to live in Leiden, which has become a basic humble brag because I love Leiden. And I'm just saying, you know what, guys? I used to live in Leiden. It was awesome. I took Greek there from a uh, professor. So in Dutch, they taught me Greek and and a Latin. Actually, did I start with Greek? I started with Latin, didn't I? So we taught me Latin first. I was learning Latin and Greek there, but that's beyond the point. So you look here in Leiden, Netherlands, and you have information for how much of the sky is completely covered. 100%, 99%, 99, 99, 100, 100, 100. Oof, that's a bad time to go. But then Clear Outside has an extra feature that is awesome. And this is going to help you the most with sunrises and sunsets because it tells you about the low clouds, medium clouds, and high clouds which means you have a lot of high clouds at sunset or sunrise, you're going to see pre-glow and afterglow like crazy because the sunlight at that oblique angle is going to be hitting those clouds and lighting up your terrain. So knowing that you have high clouds, awesome. Now, high clouds are also not so bad to block your Milky Way either. If the most of your clouds are all happening in the high, there's a chance it's wispy and thin enough that you can get a good shot too, as long as these other ones are showing promise. And if you see some open areas, if you see something like this where it's practically 100% covered and they're just high, I still wouldn't go just because you've got a pretty full sky of clouds. It's just, it's not going to be that great. Another benefit is you get the International Space Station Passover. That's what this is. So let's go somewhere that it would pass. Um, Ohio. I was just talking to someone from Ohio yesterday who was jealous that I live in Utah. Don't worry, man. Ohio is probably awesome if you can find a dark sky site. Oh, perfect. There's an International Space Station flyover right here at this time, which is seven o'clock which is important to know that it's 7 o'clock because the best time to see the space station is when it's over the horizon and the sunlight is still hitting it, but you are in dark. And so 7 p.m., it's just set, sun has just set, but it's still going to have the light hitting the International Space Station. And there it is. It's visible. So for those of you guys living in Ohio or Peru Township, Ohio, you can see the International Space Station tonight. So check it out. So this is giving me information about the clouds total. You just kind of focus on this right here and you've got enough information, but you can also break it down by medium, high, low. There's a lot more information that's on here that we don't need to go into today, but if you want to check out my Milky Way photography course, I go into these other aspects of these sites and fully teach you how to benefit from them for all means of doing astrophotography when you're out there. So thanks guys for listening. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And hey, if you feel like hitting the thumbs down button, can you at least tell me why? I'm really curious whenever I hear why. Maybe my focus was crap like it was a couple videos ago and that's what you hated or maybe you hated the entire content and then i can't do anything about that for you so let me know and if you guys enjoy this video please subscribe we're really enjoying growing up past 4,000, and we appreciate all of you subscribing so see you guys later i'm Aaron king with photog adventures and thank you for watching i don't know why i did this <laughs> i like to call this
when you're working with this light pollution, if you're on the East Coast, you're dealing with islands of darkness. You have small little islands of dark sky that you can go to and work with. When you're living in the west side of the United States, you have all this open area where you have little islands of bright lights. And so if you're in the west, awesome, you're lucky. You're going to be working around all those light pockets very easily. If you live in the east, it's a lot harder. So let's talk about it in detail. I'm going to start off in an area in north.